grabbed on Jiang, Jiang Yu. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Gaon. Good afternoon, Professor. Once you join, please show yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to take a note. Of your name. From today. I don't know if you are actually there. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, recently I was finished with uh, Breaking Bad and the Netflix drama. It was really great. I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch that. The show. <clears throat> mm. As the weather is, is getting colder and wind the wind is getting colder and colder. So I hope you guys uh, uh, take care of yourself. Thank you, Professor, mm -hmm. for the worries. Hey guys, so once you join, the, uh, show yourself. Otherwise, you're gonna, I'm gonna take you a note of your name, who does not show yourself. Okay, from today, I really take it as uh, absent once you, if you do not show yourself, okay. This is uh, a virtual class, which does not mean that you can hide behind the screen. I uh, I made this efficient frontier using Coca Cola and Amazon. So today I hope um, we can finish uh, this part and move on faster. Mm -hmm. Do you guys using do you guys use a coupon? Do you do you guys like using coupon? Uh, I used to use that actually. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, I used to do. do you feel any, huh? Sorry? Do you feel any difference in terms of service uh, among other um, internet retailers? Actually, it comes quickly. <laughs> That's the most reason. You know, we are not, I am not like, uh, there's a lot of things to have it to carry like a water um, and it comes just after a few hours later I order, so. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I see. That's, that's what's the reason. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, some interest in Coupa. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms, uh, I mean, as an investment. Because <laughs> <laughs> actually I don't use Coupa. Oh. Uh, I, I'm just interesting, uh, interested in the uh, the stock. That's all. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm just curious of, uh, okay. about the service. Hey, please show yourself, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna take a note of your name and uh, make it as uh, absence. Okay.
Mm. But I hope you guys, uh, at least once a day, try to read an uh, article from um, the financial news outlet like uh, Bloomberg, uh, Yao Finance, any uh, the financial related section uh, of news outlet. So that is going to be really uh, keep you guys um, interested in the finance. Uh, finance. So that's important. So the other thing I'm talking about uh, based on the textbook is uh, 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 a little bit um, uh, a little bit unrealistic. Uh, so uh, sometimes, um, even though we are talking uh, talking about efficient frontier and the beta, right? Uh, if you really want to use the uh, concept into the real uh, investment, um, you're gonna confront a lot of uh, issues. Uh, sometimes you wanna ask yourself. What's the real use? What's the use of uh, this concept, um, and why it does not work? Why why does it work uh, with my uh, investment? Something like that, right? So that is really important. If you uh, have some kind of issues, and then you gotta uh, start digging into uh, uh, that concept further. So. I think it, it, that's really, uh, that's, it is really good, important to, to read uh, some news articles and try to find out, yeah, uh, some issues uh, in terms of uh, applying your understanding to the uh, reality. Okay, <clears throat> let's get started. Huh? So please show yourself, okay? Uh, otherwise I'm gonna take it as absence. I says I say so. Okay. Today uh, we are going to talk about a little bit more on market portfolio and security market line and market efficiency and cost of capital. Um, just a minute. Okay. Um, uh, we we have used uh, okay we have used uh, we have used the uh, discounted cash flow method right discounted cash flow method to uh, for valuation right for valuation so if you know the cash flow if you know the cash flow operating cash flow and and then we are gonna we discounted this uh, operating cash flow right using discount rate so we call it uh, sometimes we uh, use the term recovery rate of return or sometimes uh, interest rate or sometimes uh, discount rate or yeah so uh, Discount rate, so oh, um, there are many, many uh, rates that could be used uh, to discount this cash flow. So in general, we call uh, any, uh, any rates used to discount cash flow is discount rate, right? So at the end of the day, using uh, discount cash flow method, we made an evaluation of uh, uh, stocks and and um, bonds, right? So we use the uh, discount cash flow method uh, stocks and bonds. Stocks and bonds. Um, 
estimating the cash flow uh, is not a, a really big is is a really big issue, a big task. Uh, but um, it, this is a little bit straightforward, right? Because if we uh, can read the financial statements, um, you can get uh, this uh, the cash flows from cash flows. Yeah, you can uh, come up with cash flows, right? So mainly from financial statements. Um, but this discount rate, right? Discount rate. Discount rate is the issue, right? The discount rate is, um, okay. The cash flow is generated by the company, right? And then um, to make a valuation of the, uh, the, 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 the stocks, of the company, um, the discount rate as an investor, as an investor or a stockholder or bondholder, they have their own expected return. They expected some return from the investment in stocks or bonds, right? So when you make valuation of stocks or bonds, that expected return is gonna be, it's supposed to be, uh, uh, supposed to be discount rate. So from our investee perspective, uh, the company perspective, uh, the expected return of the investors could be required rate of return. They should meet their expected, uh, the, the company should meet the expected return of the investor. So from their side, oh, this is the rate, that is required by the investors, stockholders, bondholders. So this country is sometimes called expected return, sometimes called uh, required rate of return. So, okay. So anyway, um, this country rate, uh, so uh, first of all, the concept of discount cash flow method is a little bit older than um, this uh, market portfolio and security market line. So, uh, the papers, um, the, 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 the financial um, folks uh, had some difficulties with uh, coming with, uh, with how to uh, come up with this discount rate. So uh, then uh, Harry Markowitz, um, the economist, uh, came up with uh, some. Uh, concept, uh, efficient frontier, okay? Um, and um, based from this efficient frontier, uh, we come up, uh, they come up with a beta and from this uh, concept of beta, Capital asset pricing model was uh, was uh, created was uh, yeah created. So this this kind of a general uh, flow general development of the um, financial concept. Okay, I, I'm gonna get into details. So that this kind of a big picture. Okay, so discount rate supposed to be. Expect the return. Okay. Um, market efficiency. Um, okay. For uh, to come up. Uh, uh, for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of um, finding out this expected return, uh, the big assumption is uh, market should be efficient. This means that investors are very rational. 
okay? They are very rational. Investors are very rational. Investors are rational. They are not irrational. They are very rational. They are very knowledgeable. They are not uh, emotionally biased, okay? They are very rational. And there is no transaction cost in the market, okay? No cost, no taxes, okay? The market, so this, uh, any transaction cost, any taxes, just the, uh, um, those costs and taxes and tax, including taxes, that's make the market inefficient. Uh, the, in, under the market efficiency, uh, efficient market, those costs and taxes are not, does not exist. Okay. And all the informations are available. All the informations are available to the investors. So once the invasion, invest information is available, those informations are supposed to be reflected on the stock price. Um, here, so this market portfolio and security market line, uh, what kind of market uh, are we, do we refer? Uh, actually, it's supposed to be um, any market. The stock market, bond market, gold market, and it's supposed to be any market. But as you know, uh, bond doesn't have any formal market, right? It's just uh, uh, all the transactions are made over the count, right? So um, stock market is the uh, is the most um, is the most uh, is the almost the only. Uh, capital market where some specific, uh, where, where, uh, uh, in, uh, where organized market is, uh, uh, market, organized market exists, such as New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, Frankfurt Stock Exchange. So that's why when this market actually refers to uh, stock market. Okay, so all the concepts, um, this market, market appearance also uh, generally refer to stock market. So all the concept, market portfolio, security market line, market efficiency, the market in these terms are usually referred to stock market. Because stock market is the yeah most well established market, unlike other unlike bonds, unlike other capitals such as bond, uh, bonds or gold or whatever. Okay. Mm. I think. Okay. Uh, using uh, Coca-Cola um, uh, stock price, monthly stock price from 2017 to 2020, uh, November 2020. So over the last five years, I downloaded the, 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 the monthly stock price of this stock, Coca-Cola and Amazon. Okay, using these two stocks, this is the uh, return, okay, monthly return of this stock. So these Coca-Cola and Amazon, they are risky assets, right? They are risk assets. So using these two risk assets, Uh, we can make a portfolio, right? Let's assume that there, that there are uh, in, in this whole market, there is only these two, two stocks, right? Just assume that. Then 
uh, using these two stocks, giving a different weight to this stock, like uh, 0% to zero percent weighting to Coca-Cola and 100% Amazon, and 15 Coca-Cola, 85% 85% Amazon. So using these various weighting and using this various weighting given to these uh, two stocks. And uh, uh, based on the, um, the statistics of, of these two stocks, expected return, standard deviation, variance, or covariance correlation. You understand the covariance correlation, covariance correlation, covariance is the, whether the, these two stocks move in, the, in a similar directions, right? And the correlation is how strongly they move together, right? So using this uh, covariance correlation, calculated the expected return of this of the portfolio con consisting of uh, Coca-Cola and uh, Amazon, and the portfolio variance and the portfolio standard deviation. You guys may remember portfolio standard deviation, portfolio variance. Um, uh, not here. Okay, the portfolio expected return is simply applying this weight, uh, multiplying this, uh, applying this weight to each uh, expected result, expected re expected result of each star. Okay, and um, variance is. Uh, Okay, so you, you just refer to the previous slide, slide okay? then you can get the, uh, the, the, the formula. Okay, uh, so the, the key is, it's not about uh, memorizing the, the formula of a variance, the portfolio variance is, uh, uh, but the, what the variance means, variance is uh, how much uh, the, the return is deviate, how much more return, uh, how much uh, return actual return deviate from the expected return. Expected return is the same as the average return, okay? Average return. Average return of uh, this portfolio. Expected return. When you have uh, these uh, weightings, at uh, these weightings of each star, you're, gonna su you're supposed to have uh, this expected return, okay? And this weighting, you have you are supposed to have this expected return. And uh, the variance is also uh, based on this uh, statistics of these two star, and including weightings. Okay. And the standard deviation just uh, square root of this variance. So I hope you guys following this. Uh, uh, this, calcul this calculation, if you have time. So uh, using this portfolio, you can make this efficient frontier. So efficient frontier looks like this, right? So from this, you can see, uh, if you combine two risky assets, into a uh, portfolio upon different weighting like this, you are supposed to have this kind of a curve, right? If you, when you have combined two risk asset, two risk asset, that's important, okay? Two risk asset, two risk asset. Then you have this curve. Then this, this line, uh, x, this uh, x uh, axis is standard deviation, okay? This x line, standard deviation. And this y axis is expected return.
Okay. So from this part, we can call efficient frontier because this line, this curve is not efficient. Okay. Given the same expect same standard deviation, you can have a better expected return. So this combination of uh, two stocks is not efficient. Okay. Standard deviation is basically risk, right? The more actual return deviate from expected return, the riskier. Okay. This is the efficient frontier. And um, and but okay, uh, if you simply combine uh, two risky uh, assets, then you are going to have uh, uh, this uh, curve. So you have this efficient frontier. So, but what I really want to know is uh, expected return of a, of, a, of, a, of a security, of a stock, right? So the, how can I uh, get the expected return? So one economist, what, what one economist come up with is to use whole market. The entire market. If you take entire market, there may uh, and if you compare the single stock uh, with the entire market, then you can get expected return of the security. The, assuming that market is efficient. If you see how much the single security return fluctuate as opposed to the market return, you can estimate expected return of the security. So actually uh, there may be some better way to estimate the expected rate of, of security of, uh, of a stock. But this is the uh, most uh, popular and uh, rigorous method of uh, calculating expected return of uh, estimating expected return of uh, uh, stock. Okay. So if you compare Entire stock. Let's say S and P five hundred is a proxy uh, using S and P five hundred as a proxy for entire market. So if you compare the S and P five hundred stock uh, index changes in index and uh, stock price of, for example, Meta, okay. So using this uh, the monthly return of the same 500 to support the entire market and the meta, you can have uh, this scattered, uh, you can have this scattered uh, point and you can have this trend line like this. So, X is uh, SAP 500 and Y axis is a meta return. So we want to see uh, from this, we, we can see how meta's return is gonna change upon the changes of SAP 500 return. So we can, estimate single securities expected return using 
the market return. Like this. I downloaded these numbers from Yahoo Finance and you can calculate this return, okay? And uh, you can come, you can uh, create this uh, graph. And this graph can be expressed, expressed in this equation. Y is Meta's uh, stock re expected return and X is S&P 500 index return, okay? So if you uh, put uh, index return X, uh, index return into X, then you are supposed, you can get, you can estimate uh, the Meta's return using this linear equation from the, uh, based on this line, scattered uh, based on this trend line. Okay. So this is just the estimation of expected return of the stock based on the market return. Okay. Um, then, then, hey, this S&P 500 and Meta, they are all risk asset, right? They are all risk asset. What if we add risk-free assets? Okay, what if we add a risk free asset to the risk asset? So, oh, if we add the risk as a risk free asset to risk asset, then we can have this straight line. Why? Where? Um, let's see. Uh, this is the uh, proportion of risk asset from 10% and up to oh, 150%, could be 200% or whatever. If, and um, then let's say expect return changes like this. And this is for, uh, this is the slope, okay. Um, uh, uh, not this. Okay. Um, uh, this is security market line. I think uh, we should go back to beta, right? So, um, so beta. Okay. Uh, th this is a whole market and uh, you can see the, this equation. From this equation, you can estimate it is uh, expected with some single uh, security, right? Um, then, then, uh, As you, as you learned, there are two types of, uh, uh, we can, we can divide, um, uh, we can divide uh, the, the risks into two, two types. One is a systemic, the other one is unsystematic. Um, as, I, uh, as I said, uh, Whenever the actual return deviate from expected return or mean return, we call the deviation risk, right? But there are two reasons. Uh, uh, yeah, there, there, there's two reasons for that deviation. One is uh, avoidable risk. The, the other one is unavoidable risk, okay? The unavoidable risk is called the systematic risk, and avoidable risk is unsystematic risk. Um, for example, if you go to a restaurant, right? Uh, do you like uh, um, uh, 
do, do you like uh, the Korean beef? Hey, um, Mikai, do you like Korean beef? Mikai? Yep. Yeah, so if you go to Korean um, beef restaurant, there are some menus. Uh, there are also, uh, among the menus, there is, there is uh, uh, naengmyeon, um, cold, uh, cold noodle, right? Naengmyeon. Do you guys know naengmyeon? Yeah. Uh, naengmyeon is pretty popular during summer season, especially, right? And the uh, beef, or, or beef is uh, popular for all seasons, but um, let's see um, a restaurant sells only beef. The other restaurant sells uh, beef and naengmyeon, right? So which one is better in terms of a profit? The other restaurant, right? The, the restaurant who which sells the beef and naengmyeon is better, right? Because uh, during the summer season, summer is it, it, kind of a systematic risk, right? Nobody can avoid the, 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 the weather the summer season, right? Heating weather. So during the period, uh, the, the summer period, if you sell Nangmyeon, you wanna, yeah, make more money. So likewise, there are two types of risk, systemic risk and unsystemic risk. So unsystemic risk is, can be avoided, right? Then we're gonna think about only systemic risk. Systemic risk is market risk. Market risk, market risk is the risk that has impact the whole market, okay? That's why we, or systemic risk, market risk. So, okay, so then uh, only think about systemic risk. Then the expected return should come from, should come as a compensation for this systemic risk, right? So, okay, uh, then, how to how to uh, measure this the 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 systemic risk of uh, of uh, of a security, especially stock. So if you combine to uh, risk free asset and uh, risk asset. Before that, mm. if you combine not only, um, if you combine risk-free asset and uh, risky asset, um, just a minute, not this way. Mm. Just a minute. OK. 
Okay. This is a. Uh, this is efficient frontier. This is from this part. So this is the portfolio made of made of uh, whole risk asset. Let's assume that this uh, this is the uh, portfolio made of a whole risk asset in the market. And then if you combine, let's say, when the standard deviation is zero, then risk free, right? So uh, risk then risk. Let's see. Let's assume the risk. There are some risk-free uh, asset, and the rate of uh, the risk-free rate. Let's assume that three percent. Then you can come up with this line. Yeah, straight line. This straight on uh, this straight line. The straight line is the um, could represent the relationship between systemic risk and the expected return in the financial markets. Um, So first of all, I tried to explain. I I tried to I tried to um, find out easy way to make you guys understand better uh, the concept of beta. Uh, simply speaking, beta is the um, the uh, volatility of stock return against uh, uh, market return. So for example, here, I come up with uh, this, uh, using this meta, I come up with uh, this uh, meta's beta, meta's beta, mm. okay? So meta using uh, less uh, SM500 use uh, SM5 as a proxy for a market using SS500 and the, this the stock market return, the stock market index return and uh, meta's uh, return like this, monthly return. You can come up with uh, this beta. Beta is uh, it's just a, uh, correlation in terms of return between single secure stock returns and uh, whole market return. Okay, that is the best way to explain the concept of beta. Okay, so the relationship, okay. In the whole market, there is a many, many stocks so one of the stock, I pick up meta, and the meta stock returns changes as the whole market stock return changes. And then using these statistics, standard deviation correlation of each uh, of the market and uh, each stock, this stock, using the formula of bet, for the beta, First of all, if you divide the standard deviation, uh, if not standard, if you start, uh, first of all, you should divide the standard deviation of this uh, like, like this. And then if you yeah, multiply these two, then you're supposed to have it. There are two, three ways of uh, calculating this beta. I mean, the other way, three ways to come up uh, to, to find out the uh, uh, 
to get the beta using this uh, using this uh, this three method. Okay, so so you if you, you go to you visit Yahoo Finance and download any uh, monthly uh, monthly uh, uh, stock price. Okay, or when you stop, then just uh, copy and paste. It, then you can come up with some yeah. Come up with a beta of uh, uh, some specific uh, stuff. So the beta is the how what how volatile one star is when the whole market change in terms of return. That's the beta. So the higher the beta is. Of, of the higher the uh, the higher the better of the stock is, the more volatile the return of the stock is. Okay. So when the beta is uh, low, the less volatile. So here, so when beta is one, then the stock price is almost. Uh, move along with uh, market return, okay? So market beta is one because uh, changes of this there, right? You guys understand the concept of beta? No? Still no? Oh. Okay. Um. Um. You know, the finance is, it, 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 this, this is, uh, okay. If you want to know the future, the best way is to have a crystal ball, right? But we don't have a crystal ball. So here, instead of a crystal ball, we have a market. Market is kind of a crystal ball, okay? And if you look into this crystal ball, I mean the market, stock market, then you can see the future of the stock. I mean, the, the future of the, uh, the, the stock within the uh, single, uh, some uh, particular stock within the market. So, Actually, there are many, many, some other ways to uh, find out the uh, stock return using a uh, different method. But as I said, market is efficient. So this is better. So market is efficient. Market is perfect. So with that assumption, with that assumption, with, a, with that assumption, market is perfect. So market is benchmark. Okay, market is kind of a perfect, something perfect. So if you see how single security return changes as opposed to market return. And you, if you find the relationship between the two using some statistics, you know what statistics, right? Statistics is just kind of, kind of uh, uh, it, the, the statistics is, is based on, you guys know statistics, right? So uh, using this statistics, standard division correlation, right? We, this is not uh, exactly, the, the this is not a, a very uh, it's not this is not a science of uh, 
uh, or over uh, the precision. This is just estimation. Okay, so uh, to estimate uh, using this uh, um, the, the changes in the stock uh, changes is the return is of the stock market and uh, changes in return of a single stock. We we find this trend line, and uh, likewise. Uh, we find uh, the beta is kind of a beta is, as we uh, have this trend line. Beta is the uh, is the numbers that show uh, how much uh, how, um, how volatile uh, the stock return is. As opposed to the changes in uh, return of the stock market. So if beta is one, then here. If it is beta is one, then it moves uh, hand in hand with the market, and if beta is less than one then when market moves uh, return rises one, then it rises less than market, okay? Conceptually. So as the beta is getting higher of uh, a particular stock, then the stock is much more volatile than market, okay? So the beta is basically systemic uh, systemic risk, a sensitivity of a single stock to the systemic risk. Okay, because the because the the stand because because the standard deviation of a market return is the systemic risk, right? So we use the standard deviation of a market, right? When you when we calculate this meta, a beta, right? So at so. Oh, you can see, see, it's a minute. You see, you see, beta, from this formula, we can get some sense what the beta actually means from this uh, formula. Covariance, covariance of this single uh, particular stock and the market. So. Uh, this covariance of uh, uh, between uh, particular stock and the market divided by variance of market market variance. This is what System systematic risk, right? So. This formula actually says that how this particular security and the market moves to get how much they move together as opposed to systemic risk, right? This formula, you can interpret this formula like that. Covariance is covariance. Covariance need at least more than uh, more than one stop, right? So uh, covariance need two stop, two 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 variables. So one variable is particular stock, the other one is a market portfolio. Okay, whole market. Then if they move together. Uh, that 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 is uh, that is uh, 
measured by covariance, right? And uh, this division, uh, the covariance divided by variance, uh, uh, market variance means that they, uh, uh, the, the, this actually, the result is actually shows that after considering this system risk, variance is always a risk, right? Variance means that deviation from the expected return in terms of um, when it comes to market variance, uh, this market variance means that deviation from the expected market return, right? So this is how rare, how rare they vary after adjusting for systemic risk. So, um, yeah, that's 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 that's, that's what I that's what but that, that's what I can say. Um, yeah. Um, and from this graph, uh, um, as where let's say um, we combine risk-free asset and risk asset, and like this, we have this uh, straight line. If you use uh, these uh, numbers, you want to have a straight line. So whenever you, whenever you use a uh, risk-free asset. From here, risk free uh, return is 8%, right? Because uh, when risk is at zero and the entire uh, portfolio is made of, uh, consists of uh, uh, risk free asset, you want to have 8% risk free. So, anyway, um, if you combine a risk free asset, until now we only use the risk asset, but uh, if you combine risk free asset, then there is a very good way to uh, estimate uh, expected return of a single stock. Um, because first of all, we can have this straight line, straight uh, linear line, okay? And um, using the beta, the single strut is beta, we can expect the expected return, okay? This beta changes as we have, uh, like here, beta changes as we have uh, more risky assets, like this. As we have a more risky asset, beta is getting higher and higher. Right, I mean, it makes sense. The um, high risk, a high return, basically, right? Intuitively, th this makes sense, right? Um, but here, sometimes we uh, may have some uh, combination of uh, risk-free and risky asset uh, that, that, uh, that deviate from this uh, straight line. Yeah, that's possible. But if you, for example, like see, if you have any uh, stock that produces expect return um, higher than other uh, stocks, given the same risk, people is, investors gonna purchase that stock, this stock C, right? Then the price of the stock goes up, right? So the expected return goes down. So in the end, when, if the market is efficient or the, uh, efficient, the expected return supposed to 
if, if you're talking about single stock, uh, the expected return should, should be on this line. This is the, another way to uh, put the adjustment of the uh, adjustment, adjustment, uh, uh, stock A and stock, stock asset A and asset B. Uh, asset A looks better than asset B, right? Because uh, given the same uh, risk, asset A has a higher expected return. But as time goes by, goes by as far as this asset A, asset B, are trading in the same efficient market, they are supposed to be on, they're supposed to be on the same line like this. Okay, so if they keep, if, if they, the investors trading stock A and stock B, investors purchase stock A, uh, they they are they are buying stock A. They are selling stock B, right? So then stock A's prices goes up, stock B's price goes down. So in the end, the expected return uh, is going to be the same. So in the end, we have we're going to have one single security market line. So yeah, like this. Uh, this R prime means um, steer pay. But please, there are um, many investors who uh, make a lot of money, right? Um, a, a higher return than a market return. There are many, many, many uh, investors, right? Like a Warren Buffett. They're, uh, investment return is, uh, yeah, phenomenal. So what does, what is happening? Um, that means um, there's already some inefficiencies in the market. So market is actually in reality, market is not perfect market. I mean, the whole, uh, some investors are, are irrational, and sometimes uh, some informations um, are not uh, perfectly available to all uh, investors, and um, some investors are too much uh, risk seeking, and some investors are too much risk averse. So there are a bunch of different types of investors, and and there are many, many biases among investors. So that's why, um, and there is some uh, information, uh, uh, asymmetric information, uh, asymmetric information, uh, asymmetric distribution information. So there is uh, some room for uh, ARPA, additional return. So higher than uh, expected, uh, ex uh, higher expected return than the return on the security market line. Uh, I hope you guys uh, understand a little bit better. I don't know. Uh, but at the end, uh, it's pretty easy to find the beta uh, in the, uh, uh, from the website. So if you visit this, uh, this is uh, linked to Yahoo Finance, so you can find some yeah, beta within some range. Professor? Yeah. Uh, can you get back to the slide with two graphs? This one? Previous. Mm -hmm. one, one graph back, like one, then slide. Yeah. My question was, uh, you mentioned that uh, for the C point, the um, C bond, it will go up because uh, it will go down because the price will go down. Uh, I think I forgot from macroeconomics why the price of the bond will go down. No, no, no. This C is going to price go. Okay. Uh, this is uh, stock C. You see, uh, 
if this uh, expected return is a uh, higher than uh, higher than uh, the return on the security market run, right? So based on our based on our uh, the formula, uh, based on our expectation, uh, this C is supposed to have uh, expected return uh, around here, right? But actually here, right? So the higher return, you can expect a higher return if you purchase the C. So then people, investors are gonna buy this uh, uh, stock C. Then if you buy, um, uh, demand is a high, then the stock C is gonna, price of stock C is gonna uh, rise, right? So then if a stock price is a rise, then expected return goes down. So then, as far as the market is efficient, the C expected return moved down around here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, investors are prepared with diversified, diversified companies because they are less uh, risky. Is it true or false? Wow. Investor prefer diversified companies because they are less uh, risky. True or false? Mostly true, but it depends on the, on the investor's preferences. Right. Um, Diversification, right? Diversification already reduces the um, let's see. See the Coca Cola and uh, Amazon, right? The standard deviation is between five point six one and Amazon nine point nine point six seven. So if you have uh, if you have a portfolios, if you have a, uh, not single, but if you have a, combine these two stocks into portfolio, then uh, you're supposed you can you can have uh, I mean, here, this line, this curve, actually, um, I cannot, okay, this, on this front line, front, front uh, different front, uh, frontier line, the curve, all the uh, combinations actually are supposed to have less standard deviation, uh, a high expected return, for uh, standard uh, for uh, for a standard deviation, this means that um, if you have uh, uh, portfolios, the the, the, the diverse, uh, if you have uh, uh, the different types of uh, securities, then you have you're gonna have a less standard deviation than uh, than having only a single stock. But the question is that investors prefer diversified companies. Diversified companies means that companies are having business, uh, various types of business, right? When it comes to diversification, it does not mean that the company should have a diversified business. We are talking about uh, different types of companies. 
right? So diverse companies, diversified companies is not not the kind of uh, uh, diversification we mean in terms of investment. Okay, so this is not uh, true. Okay, if the stocks were perfectly positively correlated diversification, okay, we don't have time, so um, I'm gonna give you uh, this. Uh, uh, answers uh, answers to this question later. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, this is capital asset pricing model. Okay, using this beta. Okay, this beta beta is a relationship of uh, single security, uh, the, the volatility of single security against the whole market. Using this beta, you can expect you can estimate some expected return with uh, single security uh, this capital asset pricing model is based on this security market line okay this slope is beta okay and uh, slope is um this line is beta. The slope is the um, difference between market expected return of a market minus risk per asset divided by this beta, right? Then we have this slope. This is my security market line slope. Um, yeah, this is straightforward, right? Because uh, if you combine risk free asset with the risk asset, you are supposed to have this single straight line, right? If you have only a uh, risk asset, you're gonna have this curve. But we, if you add a risk-free asset, you're gonna have this um, straight line. Then this slope, this slope like, looks like this, right? Like this, and if you um, if the the beta is a market, then this is going to be one. Then the slope is going to be expected return of a market minus risk free rate, but. We are talking about some particular stocks, okay? That particular stock, beta is not one. They have their own, it could be one, but they have their own beta. So this beta is, um, is the sensitivity of uh, particular stocks return to the market return. This is a market return. Okay, market return. Expect a market premium, actually, yeah, because uh, risk-free asset a risk free rate is uh, deducted from market return. So, market premium. Yeah, this is market, respect to the market return, and this is risk free, so risk premium. So, uh, return for the uh, market risk. So, this is the um, return for the, uh, the systemic risk. Yeah. And uh, beta is. Uh, how how much 
uh, the single security react respond uh, to the uh, market uh, market systemic risk. Okay. We already saw how to calculate this better, right? So try to conceptually understand uh, uh, this formula. Okay. That's important. Uh, many questions are based, I mean, once you simply memorize this formula, then there are many, many questions we can solve. But th that is gonna be quite boring, right? So um, please try go back, please go back to this uh, form, uh, the, the, uh, th th this, uh, this statistics and try to uh, use some uh, different uh, stock uh, return prices, okay, stock prices, and then try to come up with some uh, on your own on uh, this graph, on this curve, okay, efficient frontier, and try to come up with a uh, uh, calculate the beta of different stocks, okay. So then uh, you may have a better understanding. Do not simply uh, uh, memorize this formula. Okay, um, so here, okay, market capital efficiency is important. So, it, it, so uh, without the uh, the market capital efficiency, um, the efficient market, without efficient market, there's no ground on this, uh, security market line or beta or whatever okay so we our uh, hypothesis is the market is uh, perfect efficient but actually in reality uh, market is not always efficient so there are three types of market efficiency um, actually right so New York stock exchange may be a little bit more efficient than Korean stock exchange, right? Maybe, <laughs> I'm just saying maybe. So uh, three forms of uh, market efficiency. One is weak form market efficiency. Weak form, under the weak of market efficiency, uh, current security prices uh, fully reflect all current, uh, currently available security market data. And semi-strong form market efficiency, current security prices full, fully reflect all publicly available information. Strong form market efficiency, security prices fully reflect all information from both public and private sources. Okay, um, weak form. So the most, uh, uh, the less developed the, uh, form of a market, uh, market has, uh, um, has only, uh, has um, has the uh, has the, uh, 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 the the stock prices in that uh, the weak form market efficiency uh, reflect only historical information. Okay, only historical information. And semi strong form market efficiency under semi strong market efficiency, the stock prices reflect past historical and uh, um, currently. Uh, available, publicly available information, but not private information, okay? And the strong form market efficiency, all the public and private information are reflected in the stock price. Um, strong form market efficiency is almost, in, uh, may not, does not, may not exist yet because the private sources of information is not usually available in most markets. Let's skip this. Okay, so today the, the next big topic is uh, cost of capital. Um, as I said, why why, why we have why we uh, why, why why should we estimate the expected return of the stock? Why? Because 
uh, expected return of stock is gonna be cost of equity capital, right? Because we should meet, we should uh, deliver their expected return. I mean, the, from a company perspective, uh, when you, the, the equity investors put their money into the company, right? Purchasing uh, the uh, shares. So they have their own expectation on their equity investment. So that expectation was estimated using this capital SM pricing model. Where is it going? Okay. Where is it going? Anyway, yeah, kept as a pricing model. Okay. That the cost of that is normally um, straightforward than equity, uh, cost of equity, right? Uh, interest rate or coupon rate. Okay. On the, uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, that, on the that. So, so the cost of capital consists of equity cost, uh, cost of equity capital and the cost of debt capital. So cost of capital depends primarily on the use of funds, not the source. So depending on what kind of a capital, depending on what kind of a capital you use and uh, how you use uh, how the company used the, uh, the capital, the cost of capital will be decided. This means, um, I mean, this statement means that, okay, um, you are invested the $100. You uh, raised $100 from, let's say, uh, from equity investment, equity investors. Then this $100, cost of this $100, uh, depends on the risk of uh, risk of uh, how the risk of the uh, risk of uh, the risk of the project you're gonna use this money for. Okay. So if you use uh, this one hundred dollars equity raised from equity uh, shares. If you use the, uh, this um, $100 in a risky project, then cost of capital, cost of equity capital will uh, increase. But if you use this uh, $100 in a less risky project, then cost of capital or cost of equity capital would go down. That's what this, uh, this statement says, statement means. Okay, so um, yeah. I mean, using one hundred dollars. If you invest in uh, the uh, risky company, the company who has many risky projects, then you have you want to have a high expected return, right? The same goes for the uh, equal investment as well. Okay. Mm. Once you know, once you calculated this uh, equity uh, cost of equity using this capital asset price model, sometimes you can use uh, you can get uh, required return using this kind of different model. You guys remember this formula? Just uh, yeah, rearrange the the formula. So once you know uh, the cost of capital, equity, and debt, then. Uh, Depending on the, let's say the whole capital consists of only equity, equity and debt. But depending on the proportion of equity and debt, uh, you can calculate uh, the average cost of capital, weighted average cost of capital. Okay. So you have uh, 
cost of equity cost of capita, you have a debt cost of capita. And uh, if you have, if you, uh, if the cast, if, if the, uh, the, the capital is entirely raised uh, uh, from equity, then yeah, uh, you you're gonna think of, you can you wanna um, the only one hundred percent of equity cost of equity capital uh, would be uh, yeah weighted average cost capital. But in most cases, uh, companies use both equity capital and debt capital. So depending on the proportion of equity and debt capital and uh, uh, the cost of capital of each uh, cost of uh, of each capital, you can calculate uh, this weighted average cost of capital. This average weighted cost weighted weighted average cost of capital is gonna be yeah use the uh, the uh, use uh, this weighted average cost uh, capital is used to. Uh, value uh, the entire company, okay? Because the whole company is, a uh, whole company financed through equity and debt, okay? I think this formula is pretty similar to a discount cash flow method. Okay. Uh, this time, um, cash flow not just from operating from the whole asset, because uh, Weighted average cost of capital is the uh, is going to be used to uh, value the entire company, not just uh, okay. Um, up to now, um, what we have, we have uh, up to now, we up to now. This is a, a debt portion, right? Debt. This is equity. So we uh, we uh, learned how to value make make a valuation of debt, right? Separately, we uh, learned how to value make a valuation of debt, how to make a valuation of equity. We we learned separately, but now. We are gonna value this asset side. When we uh, make a valuation this debt, we use the uh, the cost of debt, right? When we make valuation of equity, you use the cost of uh, cost of equity, right? But now we want to value this asset side. Then you should use this waste, uh, weighted average cost of capital because uh, this asset comes from this debt and equity. Right. So then, uh, then nothing's different from this discount cash flow method. Okay. Sorry. Um, this is pretty uh, boring. I know, <laughs> but pretty important. Okay. So take your time, and if you guys have any questions, understanding uh, and problems, understanding this whole concept, and uh, uh, I'm going to explain you further. And I'm going to give you uh, the answers to these questions, okay? Uh, so uh, please uh, follow up uh, on the questions. So next time, uh, next lecture, uh, long-term financing too, and uh, we, we, should, we are quite behind the schedule, so I'm going to speed up the front. I'm going to speed up the, uh, the, yeah. Okay, so any questions? No. Okay, please ask me if you uh, difficulty have difficulty understanding uh, the concept. Okay, please may email. Okay, but thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you.
Thank you, Professor. You too. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor.